This is like the gateway to Gitalco, which is a project they did uh, last year. As you approach in the boat, it's the first thing you see, it's like a landmark. And the first uh, people who come here, we usually bring them here and explain a bit about Gitalco, which is a 6,000 area hectare a farm, Campo, that follows this valley up into other valleys and other rivers. It's two rivers, three rivers. On the smallest one of those, the idea is to build the bridge you're planning. And Gennaro from Italy. And Daniel from Barcelona. Antonio, Italy. And Santiago from Santiago. <laughs> <laughs> Oye, guía al bote, me volaba. Santiago, vos tenés que estar preocupado. Tenés que ir bien nivelado. Que, que vaya bien nivelado. O sea, el agua, loco. Pero es muy celoso. No, celoso. I have the very important job to connect a leg to a bench so that we can sit to eat so that we will be strong to build a bridge. Okay, yeah, so uh, we're here and the first steps to building this bridge is to uh, survey the site to get the uh, locations of the mass in order and then dig the holes deep enough so that we can get the masses in. And once that's done, um, we, we patch a... <coughs> We patch the holes so that the masts are in and strong, and then we can string the rope through and get the decking through. And that kind of just leads to uh, the tensioning phase near the end. Somehow it's Hopefully we have a bridge. This project for a bridge is now the second in a row for the site here in Hacienda Cuitralco. And uh, it will be part of a larger series of projects that will look at the site and its beauty and specificity. And what we try to do is to insert a number of facilities that are convenient on the site, from viewing platforms to ways of reaching hot springs, to the way of reaching across the river, etc. And to do this with very little impact on the environment, but on the other hand, with some design innovation. And the question of course is how can you do design innovation in a context where you have low technology, so that means you have to invest all the design intelligence, of course, in the design phase and think very carefully about what can be accomplished in the context. In the long run, this is probably one beginning project for more projects of that sort on different sites that are very sensitive and that need careful development. So basically what we try to do here is come up with a catalog of ideas for sites which are ecologically sensitive and where something interesting can be done. In the first hand I proposed to Michael, I, I proposed him the idea of, of coming to Chile. And once Martin was visiting me in London and I was telling him about this idea of bringing people to Chile to build, to do something, uh, ideally to build projects and then we came up with the idea Martin made me the offer of doing it here in, in, in Quitralco. But it came out very well. I think the experience overall, of, overall was very good, sort of uh, especially for the students. They were very excited about the work. We get it done, people like it. With the, uh, with the idea of coming back again, we have more resources here. We get more resources also for in, in London in terms of money, so we can afford to build a, a, a larger project. We're moving forward in that sense, so we, we did a first uh, work, the first project, and we did it well, and now we are doing another one that is slightly more complex in terms of um, construction and, and, and also large in terms of the scale.
and I think it's pretty pretty good day number one. I think we are pretty happy with the with the progress we've done so far. So that means here inside you cannot use the pickaxe anymore, you just have to shovel. And the weather is good, it helps us today. It is not so sunny, we're not burning. And overall, we're making good progress, although we have not found the treasure yet. It was just very difficult, I think, to get all of these holes aligned in a... Well, because it's curved. Oh, just fantastic. A bit hard. But I guess after this, if you just feel you can build anything but I just feel fantastic and the speed with the um, with the um, people that are on site already three of them I think we are we are really moving fast the holes are nearly finishing and the locks are drilled and they're all ready I think we might get one of the locks up already today I'm just afraid that uh, the, whole, the thing as a whole will be quite cumbersome and difficult to work with, especially if there are people holding the thing and then you have to tie one rope and tension it to a certain level. It will kind of throw everything out of whack and maybe disturb the system in a way that kind of makes it difficult. Tom, Plus, you your, think your system would be that the poles are already standing at that moment, yeah? Yes. Okay. And uh, both, no, both systems. Yeah, both systems have that, yeah. yeah. So it will be standing no. and the ropes no. will be fed yeah. one by one from one end to the next. Yes, yes. And then through that process, do you integrate the timber elements? Yes, yes. On Just the go? <laughs> yes. The, the main structure. There are ten, 10 timber elements that are integrated in the weaving. Do, do, you, do you think, Tom, that you can... Main, it is yeah. possible okay. to... Because uh, you first put the, the timber elements that are closer to the shore, to the to one of the band. Do you think as you put this guy, these guys on, can you actually walk over them, that that would be steep at some moment? So we, we will have some kind of platform growing from the side? We, we could tension them but reasonably high enough that you could actually walk on the Well, if, if we do it like that, I'm so perfectly fine with that system. Uh, we, we put today a natural kind of scaffolding together that I think it, it, it will work. Yeah. That's enough to... And it's very safe, actually, because you have the piece of wood that goes from one end to the other, mm -hmm. plus two pieces that are in a V shape. I don't think... There I is don't a deformation, yeah? I don't you, think... You push yeah, 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 tension, I don't think yeah. it's, it's possible to... The scaffolding would have to be... <coughs> We in, like in that case, in the, in the Tom way, we need the scaffolding <coughs> anyway. The scaffolding what about would if have we to have be a bridge underneath? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just say one but thing. that we have already. We were standing, Daniel and I, in order to check that we were standing in the river today. And for somebody who's reasonably tall, and that's not me, it's actually possible to yeah. do this without the scaffolding. You can actually reach there. It's not yeah. that high. The good thing is that when you're when you are standing, say, 
You mm. stand on the pieces that are in V and then you lean against the, the piece where we no, always cross. And as long as we have some ropes where we That's can fine. sort of uh, don't remember, hang on. Don't remember mm. that you have always okay, to weave. The problem that we yeah. talk about Santiago also are the, the mistakes. Yeah. Because in the in every scale the model we made, one twenty, one five is always made weaving mistake. we made mistake because you are not weaving something through uh, flat things. Yes, yes. But so you are weaving, weaving something, something that that's is already curved. As, uh, you know, a certain a skull, this that is a skull mesh. So okay. you have to throw uh, to think in space. How you can weave all this? Uh, so that would that would be one of the problems. Yeah. That would be one of the mistakes. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite. It's not just making mistakes. Like it doesn't have to be one by one, but ten by exactly. ten. Exactly. I think we really ask. Unfortunately, not tomorrow. We ask. No. Okay, what we're doing here is we're starting the weaving of the uh, main ropes for the bridge. The, there's going to be 10 ropes going in this direction, which they're laying out right now. Each rope passes through each strut, and there's another 10 ropes going in the other direction. So the idea is that one rope starts in one pole in this side and ends up in the pole in the opposite side. And the same with the ropes on this side. So these are the initial eight ropes, so we still have a lot of weaving to do. That's more or less the idea of it. All right, let me... Oh, no. But now the ropes need to be shifted slightly to the side more, no? It's the closest one. So we have, just in the, during the morning, we put this A here, that is like the first main two poles, there is two other, two more in the other side, but they, they are shaped like a V. And these holes here are the foundations. So we have these uh, pieces of wood that are the locks with the ropes coming out that connect afterwards to the structure of the bridge. Which is a kind of, you know, but we are losing everything because the voice is the most powerful thing that an actor has. So 
sound in it. It was just as powerful. I mean, I had voices <laughs> dubbed into it. When they were just playing music in the background. I hope that, that, that might not be talking to be part of it. <laughs> Yeah, our side is open pulse, so we'll move across and then over. And what's going to happen now is that the ropes are woven together. Each end of the rope is going to go through a hole of the mast, and as soon as we start tensioning all the ropes, the bridge is going to shape itself. With the bridge project we have now reached a somewhat crucial phase. All the earthwork is done, all the anchor points are in. This is a bridge that is very much working with tension cables. And uh, we have also planted the four poles yesterday and we have based the main ropes. So now we're entering the phase where the tensioning will take place. It uh, will take great care. We have to make sure that we very symmetrically tension all the ropes so that uh, no knots occur, no problems occur. And it's very exciting now to reach this phase because once this is accomplished, we will reach the point where we will place the decking and where we can finally stand on the bridge and cross it. Thanks, Does anybody have a set of drawings okay, inside people, here? There's three bags of Parmesan cheese, please. The good news is that um, we shouldn't have started installing rope until tomorrow morning. <laughs> As you can see there, uh, we managed to put everything up and now is the step called tensioning. Basically we have to put the right amount of tension in each cable to make a bridge, to make it form a kind of arch um, and it will take a while because uh, we got 20 cable each side and we really have to manage to come up with a system for putting the right amount of tension in them and measuring this tension. We're building right now that decking. It's gonna go on top of the struts which are already over there in the bridge. There are 22 sections. A section will be from here to here. We're we're attaching the deck components uh, to the main uh, bridge structure. 
with this kind of lashing technique that we developed in the studio. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much what holds the bridge together and that's what what's gonna, you know, it's pretty much our last step. Gonna tension this part of this side and the opposite part of that oh, side. Is the first day we've been installing the decking. And actually, uh, fortunately, we've gotten it all in. We're just inst installing the last panel right now and um, simultaneously increasing the tension in each of the lines. And hopefully tomorrow, we are final tensioning and um, we'll have a bridge. So uh, it's really exciting. We're well ahead of schedule. So it seems to be a pretty great, pretty great day. We're, we're moving right along. Uh, we're in day four now. Uh, all the structure is, is up. We are just uh, tensioning, so we have some vertical struts sort of holding the bridge while we tension. And that should be the last. We'll tense again tomorrow. And then it's just, uh, we just have the knotting left, sort of tightening up a bit. And that should do, that should be the bridge ready tomorrow, one day ahead of schedule. The problem is that we want to achieve again uh, the smooth curvature and arch form that we had before putting on the deck. Because this is a problem about the weight of the deck and the tensioning system we are adopting. As now we are thinking about reducing the deck or adding some piece of wood underneath the intermediate sections just to achieve that curve. But we still have to accomplish a definite decision. No, because you're standing on it now, but before it, it was. Yeah. Because now we'd be deflecting the rope to make it go around. The, uh, then here we have to watch out, no? Yeah, As right. we keep tensioning and further back there as well. There's one where we need to watch right. out as well. How much more tension do you have before we start taking some sort of thing? Like I have no idea. I'll see you guys back there. At this moment, basically, we're um, tensioning the bridge, um, trying to get it into um, the sort of arching position that it should be, given all the models and designs that we had made before. Um, so just line by line, we're um, tightening up, tensioning each line, and as we do that, it starts to... Uh, 
create that shape, it starts to get into form. And uh, I think the next thing we'll do is actually start to take a little weight off of the deck. So there's kind of a balance between how much weight is pulling it down and how much tension is pulling it back up.
Very good, very good. Small injuries, but very good. We are the world champions. <laughs> Having the opportunity to build and to practice uh, their design done a priori. I guess that's faster than what we thought. And all of the people are working as hard as possible. And that's, that's just amazing. I've never actually seen something all the way from design to construction. So um, it's a really great experience for me to be hands-on through the entire design process and finally be able to see something get built. It's a way of making something new and uh, in very advanced design, but with a very low level technology. And I think this is uh, one of the most important aspects of this project and why we are here. A lot of the learning process takes place and, and um, the kind of most uh, exciting and, and new things that we get to discover with this kind of work. You know, I think it's something very unique to uh, architecture schools to be able to do something like this. So I'm very glad to be part of it. And um, Yeah, and in, in addition, it's just, you know, it's a lot of fun and it's something new. Okay, well, I'm an engineer uh, and this is my first experience on a construction site. So to me, it's, I mean, uh, it's very important to to get to this point because I never had an experience like this and manage to build something with your hand and you know not having a kind of advanced tools uh, is something really re re rewarding. So hopefully this experience will not just for me but for everyone will be able, be able to carry it on um, throughout our professional careers as well. Uh, I think at the end. We, we will be more aware of, of the meaning uh, of it at the end of the trip. So when you, ha when you can build afterwards with high technology as well, you can accomplish basically whatever you want.